Now this is a time for leadership report. Good afternoon, everyone. Good I'm John Kinesny, conference lay leader, and I also happen to be a disciple who, who resides in the newly formed Williamsport District. <laughs> Williamsport District, large district on a large back. It's not an extra large yeah. shirt, too, is it? Oh, it's just <laughs> 2X. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Mike Biella, the Director of Connectional Ministries. It is our privilege to be opening presenters in this combined report of the Cabinet, <clears throat> Connectional Ministries, and Visioning Leadership Team. We are continuing to live into this new conference, new structure, and new vitality that we pray will take us where God is leading us as we are alive in Christ together. You may have noticed that there has been one word that seems to have been lifted up several times since we began our holy conferencing. One word that helps, both helps us define and differentiate us from other Christian communities. One word that is part of our DNA, and unfortunately, it is rarely celebrated enough. One word. Uh, John, uh, chicken joke is two words. Enough with the chicken jokes. I knew this was going to happen. All right, but you know, I didn't even get to tell one last year. People missed it too, because on the evaluation forms, and we count those evaluation forms, they're important. On those evaluation forms, at least two different people said they missed it. Yeah, Mike and who else? And I thank my wife and my son. <laughs> well, I'm not talking about chicken jokes this time. I'm talking about a word that is uniquely United Methodist. That one word is connectionalism. You know, John, that's a good word. And sometimes connectionalism is a little bit hard for us to understand or to explain. In fact, if you look in the, dis in the dictionary, you won't even find that word. It's, it's our word. It's the church's word. It's a United Methodist word that describes who we are and how we choose to live out our life as the Church of Jesus Christ, how we live alive together. We believe that we are better together. Many folks don't realize it, but this body here, all of you, are the basic body in the United Methodist Church. I like to think of it this way. We really only have, in the Susquehanna Conference, one church, the United Methodist Church Susquehanna Conference. What we have, in addition to that, are about 920 plus storefronts or outlets or entry points into the community or locations or mission fields, whatever you want to call them. And like a rope that's made up of all different cords and twines, all intertwining together, all these strands coming together, that's a good image of what it means to be the United Methodist Church. Each strand of that rope is different, yet adds much to the whole. Each congregation offers a unique identity, yet together offering the same sustaining grace and love of God in Christ. All under a theological umbrella that is inclusive, evangelical in outreach, yet committed to social justice, and missionally centered on transforming the world in the name of Christ. I'm wondering, what if we really made it easy, John? What if we really ask our folks to remember what it means to be connectional with these words? What if we simply said, we're better together? Let's, let's try the body. Say it with me. We're better, better together. together. That works. Better together means that we are able to be much more effective in mission and ministry in ways we could never be as individual churches. It means we can reach more people in more places and in more ways than any one congregation, regardless of its size. A conference vision, a shared vision of a preferred future where every local church is passionately reaching beyond its doors claiming its community for Christ, and through it all, is helping to transform the world. We envision a conference 
where people are alive in Christ together on a journey of faith. Brothers and sisters, since the birth of the Susquehanna Conference in 2010, our leadership has committed itself to discern God's direction for us. We talked about starting with a clean slate of paper and, and listening for God's direction as we put every aspect of our conference life together. And we hope that you are beginning now to sense the stirring of new life within the congregations as they claim what is our new mission field just outside the four walls of our sanctuaries. We long for the day when not even a single congregation is worried about survival, but will discover the joy of being a church alive. Remember our words, not our words, but words that we used from Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, those words that were foundational for us as we began this new conference. It went like this, Forget the past, the old ways. God is about to do something new. Can't you see it? We believe that we are beginning to see new signs of life and vitality around the conference. And we are seeing what happens when churches turn away from focusing on making members and intentionally focusing on helping people to walk the journey of faith and discipleship. To facilitate that change, our conference leadership is carefully and prayerfully in the process of aligning all of our resources, human resources, financial resources, all around the unique mission of what it means to be an annual conference. Remember what those are, just briefly stated. Number one, training and deploying quality transformational leadership, both clergy and lay to lead the disciple-making task in the local church because, my friends, that's where it happens. Secondly, our mission as an annual conference is to equip our local churches with effective tools and best practices for disciple-making in the 21st century and the reformation or the reformation of the church. And thirdly, to provide a covenantal connection for mission and ministry beyond the local church. We waited two years to put a new restructure into place. We wanted to be sure we would have a structure that would support and, and enable us to do the work we have chosen to do. We worked hard to develop a structure that is one, empowering with flexibility that will encourage creative ideas while not sapping our resources and our energy. A structure that is clear in understanding its purpose of strengthening and vitalizing existing local churches and will nurture and grow a culture of new church plants. And a structure that's focused and aligned with our conference mission of resourcing local churches and growing effective leadership. It was just about six months ago this January that the new Connectional Ministry teams were put into place. It's then that they began their worshipful work using prayerful discernment of God's leading and the adaptive leadership uh, model of thinking as their guide. And while just beginning this adaptive work, we are beginning to see the results one strand at a time. One strand as all the strands begin to wrap around each other and strengthen the whole with our five ministry teams focused collaboratively on resourcing and equipping our local churches, we are discovering uh, how we can be better together. The leaders call to serve on these teams are living into a new way of thinking and visioning in order to best provide the resourcing and training necessary for the church of tomorrow while also caring for the needs of today. The names of the chairs that have been put into, these, into the leadership of these teams appears up on the screen, or it was there just a moment ago. I ask it if they are here today, uh, if they would please stand to be recognized by this body. Their names will also appear later in the nominations report. If you are here and you're a team leader, would you please stand and be recognized? Oh. 
And by the way, as was recommended last year, our annual conference chancellor has reviewed our new structure in light of the 2012 Book of Discipline and has reported that we are indeed in line with the requirements for an acceptable conference structure. As you said, Mike, the structure is only one strand of the larger cord that binds us together. Another important cord is the work of the full and appointed cabinets. With the redistricting and the addition of assisting elders, I think the members of the appointed cabinet may want to fill us in on how these new additions are working. Let's call upon the current dean of the cabinet, Tom Salzgiver, to get it started. We believe that the cabinet is better together. As a cabinet, sisters and brothers, we really embrace the idea that we need to work together in new ways with a smaller number of people around the cabinet table. We are depending more and more on each other as conference superintendents first and then as district superintendents. We are better together as we deal with some very difficult issues. Finances in some congregations make for solutions that can only be achieved as we work and pray together. Difficult appointments with specific needs of churches, pastors, and parsonage families. And finding our way as we work with a new team and a great new bishop. Listen now as my colleagues share some of their excitement. Here are just a few things that we have done differently this past year. As a cabinet, we have had the opportunity to share much of the administrative tasks with our assisting elders, freeing us up to work with congregations that are interested in becoming more vital, purposeful, and joyful places. We prayerfully consider the appointments of our pastors each and every time we gather together. This prayer has often led to uh, some creativity in many appointments and realignments as we seek a missional outreach as the primary focus of our work while also enabling an affordable level of pastoral ministry. We continue to seek the larger picture in terms of regional missional needs of each and every one of our appointments. We've begun to do charge conferences differently. Our goal has been to enable maximum participation, but also frees us to do other ministry in the district. We have begun to work in new ways with our new bishop. We have shared discussion about our future as well as working with full cabinet which includes our lay leader, the DCM, and our controller treasurer. We understand ourselves as partners in ministry as we share in past evaluation and future planning with the vision leadership team. Because we are now a smaller cabinet, we are learning together about our strengths as a cabinet and how we can be better together by using each other's gifts. Some of our successes include the gathering of affinity learning groups, pastors of large churches, Matthew 28 learning groups, pastoral leadership development, and soon PLD2. These experiences gather pastors together to talk about intentional learning and vitality. These gatherings are strongly linked to the conference goal of developing effective clergy leadership for the changing needs of the church. The Matthew 28 initiative statistics show that it is an effective method of moving churches toward increasing vitality. The addition of assisting elders has been of great value. These elders are not only a second person who can assist us in our roles, but they are seasoned, proven leaders with gifts which complement the superintendent's gifts so that we can more robustly serve the districts and enable more time to concentrate on areas of greatest need. The task 
of closing and merging congregations is often painful, is always time consuming and detail oriented. Our assisting elders have been very helpful in working with us through this task, these tasks so we can adequately and supportively care for this work. We have also begun to use our clusters and cluster leaders differently and more effectively following a Moses type of model. We've been meeting with our urban pastors, pastors of color and young clergy, listening and learning about the realities of ministry in their settings. And we are able to provide more educational events for the district, both now and in the future. And we celebrate the e-tours, which all who participated in found very beneficial. We can celebrate how we are living into our mission, vision, and goals as an annual conference through our new structure, which has provided an undergirding for our work. As a learning community, we have been studying cutting edge books and practicing the means of grace together, taking time to vision and talk about the future more intentionally. We will be traveling together to a conference on new church starts in November. The utilization of the Vital Signs dashboard as a tool to work with pastors and churches so they can track their own progress in moving toward greater vitality. The support of laity in learning the concepts of congregational vitality and growth, which pastors are also studying. Working with the Connectional Ministry Leadership Development Team on streamlining learning for certified lay ministers and advanced lay servant courses. Dennis Otto, whom we will hear from in a moment, is also a member of the Appoint of Cabinet, which was a conscious decision because it gives us a strong bond between revitalization and new church starts. This relationship is just one more example of how we are in partner with each other, with staff, with laity, local church leadership, proving that we are indeed better together and working to be a people alive in Christ together on a journey of faith. Growing Effective Churches is the name of an umbrella that takes in a variety of different initiatives to bring about congregational transformation and also to be involved in planting new faith communities. That may seem odd since my title is the Director of uh, uh, Congregational Development. The, uh, the phone was answered a year ago uh, by saying Office of Congregational Development. That's how we started for the first two weeks and then we realized that within a very short time, like all things Methodist, we would be abbreviated to OCD. <laughs> we also realized it didn't say nearly enough about what our intention was. Our hope was that God would be working through and in spite of us to, um, to help churches that exist grow and to begin planting new ones. Probably the, uh, the initiative that you're most familiar with would be Matthew 28. It's been around for about four years. Matthew 28 is designed to help mid-sized churches, those between 75 and 200 in worship, become more effective in making disciples for Jesus Christ. It really involves three phases uh, that we've used in almost all of our consultation work. A first phase that engages pastors in, in bringing them together to study and share together and, and then uh, look at current best practices together. A second phase that involves the whole congregation. And a third phase, if they choose to move ahead with the process, where a coach that's trained will come in and work with the leadership of that congregation for the next year. So what I keep hearing from everybody is the question, so how's it working? We're far enough now from uh, those first uh, groups that went through it to actually have some metric responses. Now I know these are simplistic, but they're at least some clear look at where we've been. In the three years before any consultations were done, we had, if you took the whole annual conference, a 6% decline in average worship attendance. That includes all the churches across the conference. 
If you looked at the 14 churches who began and followed through with Matthew 28, there was also, a, you get the trend, a 6% decline over those three years uh, in those churches. Now, in the three years that followed that, that first year of consultation, uh, they gave it away. I was going to ask you to guess because there's a theme developing. There was another 6% decline across the annual conference. But in Matthew 28 churches, we saw a 2.7% increase on average of worship attendance. Now that may not seem like dramatic growth, but it's actually, it's actually 8.7% better than their trend, and it's actually 8.7% uh, better when compared to the rest of the churches. That's a major difference. In any three-year period, only about 20% of the churches in the annual conference will show an increase in the number of people in worship. This particular group of 14 churches had six churches that showed growth. Now you might say, gee, that's not many, but it's about two and a half times what we would expect from the general, uh, a general pool from the annual conference. Well, one church stayed about the same. Seven churches declined. But when we looked at that more closely, of the seven churches that declined, five of them dramatically changed their trend. What I mean is, uh, of, of those churches, they were on a 19% decline in average worship attendance, but after Matthew 28, it was back to 5.5%. Well, that's not great. It's kind of like you're bleeding, but you're bleeding slower. But it's a lot better than where we were. What this means basically is 80% of the churches that go through this initiative are better off three years later than they were before. It seems to me the question isn't, do you think our church maybe should think about doing this? The question really, I believe, is becoming, when should our church do this? They're really, uh, this is the, the mid-sized church, but we also uh, provide things for larger churches. We do some consultations with larger churches. We've put together some groups for the pastors in larger churches. Uh, we're also uh, uh, doing something called pastoral leadership development. 160 pastors have been through pastoral leadership development. By the way, stand up fast if, you're, if you've done pastoral leadership development. Now, stand up. Go ahead, quickly, quickly. That means a lot of pastors are skipping, Bishop, because there were 160 pastors. There were 160. I'm just saying. Uh, there are 160 pastors who completed pastoral leadership development. It's going to be offered to some other districts this year, and in Lewisburg District, they're doing a second module of that pastoral leadership development, too. I'm coming to the two things that I'm most excited about right now. Uh, and the first one is that we're producing a lay equivalent to this pastoral leadership development. We're calling it Equipping God's People. It will be eight sessions ordinarily offered uh, one day or, or actually one evening uh, a month for eight months. Eight sessions that amount to 24 hours of training. This training will be very similar and kind of aligned in the same conversations and topics that we, we are um, dealing with in pastoral leadership development. It also will be the basic training for lay servant ministers, both basic and certified. Three pilots are being done this fall, two in Williamsport District and one in Harrisburg District. We believe that by this time next year, if we are not engaged across the annual conference, we'll be ready to roll that out. The last thing that is incredibly exciting to me is that we're beginning to plant new congregations. I'm absolutely convinced that we can't transform enough of our congregations quickly enough to reach enough people that we're currently not reaching. So the alternative is to begin new faith communities. Beginning uh, in Lower Swatara Township is something called New Thing, a United Methodist community. It will be started in a storefront, and we're really deliberately trying to see how can we build sustainable faith communities in areas of lower income. The second faith community that's beginning is Nueva Esperanza and Christ in Cristo a Hispanic Latino congregation that really is building on the history of Stevens Emanuel Church, 
Stevens Emanuel has faced difficulty because of the weight of the buildings, some dis dislocation and some rapid pastoral changes, but they're at a point where they're ready to relaunch into a brand new ministry. It will be based in 29th Street Church. They will share space and share pastors as they begin this new journey together. I don't know what God's laying on your heart, but I believe that there are people in this room right now that God is in which God is placing a call to begin new faith communities. Some of them will be pastors. Some of them won't be. If you're feeling that nudge and that call, I really hope you'll call me, email me. By the way, you can get to us easily through the conference website or by going to our, our website. This is tough, growingeffectivechurches.blogspot.com, growingeffectivechurches blogspot.com. If you want to find out more about how God may be ready to use you or your church to reach new people for Jesus Christ, let's talk. It's exciting stuff. We should also mention the Visioning Leadership Team. Their work is to keep the mission and vision of the conference before us and be sure that we continue to see the big picture and stay aligned. They also evaluate our effectiveness and look to the next quadrennium. They're another strand in the cord. And one more strand. At the beginning of our time together, I was honored and privileged to lead our laity session. Laity are another important strand in the bond that ties us together. There is now a new emphasis, as you just heard, on lay servant training, and we encourage the laity to reclaim their significant role as servant leaders. With congregations together, this may be, this may be the beginning of a powerful revival of ministry of all believers. This is also another one of the the significant threads needed to bind us together in Christ. John, we simply are better together. There's no doubt about it. And we're so blessed to have you as, uh, uh, as the lay leader of this annual conference in that significant leadership role, helping us together to find our way where God is leading us. As we provide resources and help lift up quality leaders, Connectional Ministries is another strand of the cord. May I humbly brag about just a few of the things that we've been resourcing just since last annual conference. I've asked our staff to come to the microphones to help us at this time. Your faithful giving of ministry shares, please uh, can, can give countless hours of human resources and gifts that make it happen, folks. This is all about what we can do together. Since our last gathering, we have taken the e-tour to all seven districts uh, a second time, introducing all of the available resources we have for churches who are ready to claim new mission fields. Since its birth, the e-tour has brought tools and resources to over 1,500 people who were all amazed at the resources that were available through their shares of ministry, simply because we are better together. I'm Ann Horton, Director of Camp and Retreat Ministry for the conference. And because we are better together, our four campsites were used to provide in the last year 73 different camping opportunities, 1,478 children and young people attended camp, 79 children and youth made first-time commitments to Christ, 127 scholarships were given for a total of $27,000, 5,000, no, excuse me, 500 volunteer staff share their lives on a regular basis. I'm Jody Robinson, Director of Discovery Place Resource Center. Because we have been better together, Discovery Place is now in its 16th year and still going strong. In the past year, I've sent out over 1,600 items to over 250 churches to help them make disciples of Jesus Christ. I continue to purchase new and informative resources 
and our entire catalog is available online, making it simple to find and order your resources. These resources are made available by the sharing together of our shares of ministry and cost only the return postage for your local church. I'm Kurt Naus, Director of Volunteers and Mission. It is better together. Volunteers and Missions has always known that truth. As the director, I have spoken to and challenged over 2,100 people in 35 churches to consider discovering the life-changing moments that people who experience a volunteer and mission trip do. This past year, over 50 persons have experienced their first mission trip. Three VIM training events yielded 46 newly trained leaders. VIM is now on Facebook and Twitter to better communicate with a generation of younger Christians who find hands-on Christianity relevant for their lives. Currently, 275 people are signed up to receive directly information on mission opportunities, and 160 people are receiving information on Hurricane Sandy relief. I'm Warren Bavakwa, and I'm the director of Young People's Ministry and Christian Education. And we're better together because the Young People's Ministry Council held rallies, youth rallies, across our annual conference with over 800 participants. We are also better together by having uh, almost 100 people participate in webinars. We've grown our social media uh, access, and my team stands ready to help your church revitalize your youth, young adult, our Christian education ministry. Yes, I'm still Ann Horton. And, and yes, we are still better together. I also helped to direct safe sanctuary training for our conference, an initiative to ensure our churches are providing safe environments for our children, youth, and vulnerable adults. Thanks to the commitment of our churches to shares of ministry, we can celebrate that we have trained in the last year 25 additional trainers to go and teach safe sanctuary courses. Through Track 1 process, we have provided a quick and effective way of acquiring clearances for folks who work with children and youth, and over 5,000 people now have taken part in doing their clearance through Track 1. We also have online training that you may take part in by also going through the Track 1 experience for free. In the, this past year, we have provided 67 events major events for our safe sanctuary training and of that or during that time over 2,000 people have taken part in the training. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Jerry Walgamuth, Director of Communications for the conference. Your communications staff continues to produce the Susquehanna link in both paper form and digital. Quick link broadcast email, Susquehanna Express webcast, social media, and now live streaming. Working with CFNA, the communications staff has developed tools to help our churches interpret the shares of ministry. These tools will be available at a conference-wide training session this fall. You won't want to miss this training opportunity. Now, here's a sample of one video in a series of short videos called Sowing for the Harvest that you can use in your churches to interpret shares of ministry. Throughout the years, the church has given to us many gifts. The gift of being into people's lives and supporting them and comforting them, challenging them. But it was 13 years ago, the church gave us a very special gift in enabling us to retire, to own our own home and live in the area we chose, 
to be able to serve in a church, a local church, in a very different way than we have served before. We have been able to enjoy our family and grandchildren as they live some distance away, visiting them. And in retirement, we have come to realize the blessings of God in a new and a different way and a, a great time for all of us. We are so grateful to God and to the United Methodist Church that has made possible such a time of gift receiving and yet we can continue to give gifts to others. We thank the church for all of their blessings. Thank you, Jerry, and thank you for all the Connectional Ministry staff. All of us today, we hope that this report will in some way bear witness to our connectional work and remind us of what it means to be better together. All of this began with God's word. Will you join me in the reading of the biblical text that birthed the vision of the Susquehanna Conference and will continue to be our guide into the future? This should be on the screen before us. But now, God's message, the God who made you in the first place, Jacob, the one who got you started, Israel, don't be afraid. I've redeemed you. I've called your name. You are mine. When you're in over your head, I'll be there with you. When you're in rough waters, you will not go down. When you're between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end. Because I am God, your personal God, the Holy of Israel, your Savior. Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert. Be present. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? Bishop Park, members of the Susquehanna Conference, thank you all in the name and for the sake of Christ for all that you do. May we all pray throughout this conference and each day that follows that we will be known as a people who are alive in Christ together on a journey of faith. <laughs>